I'm Allison Barth, Associate Professor in the Department of Biological Sciences in the Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition at Carnegie Mellon University. I'm going to tell you about our paper, an embedded subnetwork of highly active neurons in the neocortex. As experimental approaches have become more and more sophisticated, going from field potential recordings, multi-unit recordings, isolated single-unit recordings, to the targeted recordings of individual neurons within the neocortex, it's become increasingly clear the majority of cells fire at very low rates, if at all, and in fact, neocortical responses are dominated by the activity of a small subset of neurons. Identifying this small subset of cells has been an important goal in our lab. The cellular and circuit mechanisms that underlie the increased activity in the subpopulation of cells has been very difficult to study. Here we use expression of an activity-dependent reporter gene, CFOS, coupled to the fluorescent protein GFP in order to identify neurons with a prior history of elevated activity. Since induction of this activity-dependent reporter occurs several hours prior to our ability to detect GFP fluorescence, FOS-GFP-expressing neurons represent a population of cells with elevated activity. Hello, I'm Lina Yassin. I'm currently working on O2-3 processing at the Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. The work that I'm presenting today was conducted when I was a postdoc with Alison Barth at the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Animals placed in a novel environment will actively explore that environment, triggering robust FOSS expression in sensory cortex. In contrast, animals in this study were not stimulated and were simply removed from their home cage before brain slice preparation. First thing that we needed to assess is the percentage of cells that expresses the seed balls. We found out that 15% of the cells in the somatosensory cortex in mice expresses CFOS. Hi, I'm Jin Wen, a co-author of this paper. I'm preparing acute brain slides from unstimulated FOSGFP animal. We identified neurons that express FOSGFP using intrinsic GFP fluorescence. Then we switched to bright field for targeted patch clamp recording. I carried out paired whole cell recording from layer 2-3 pyramidal phosphoric P positive and phosphoric P negative neurons in order to compare their spontaneous activity. Phosphoric P positive neurons exhibited higher firing rates several times compared to their neighboring phosphoric P negative neurons. In collaboration with jean seth Renault and James Poulet at the Max Stilbrook Center in Berlin, we were able to demonstrate that phosphoric P positive neurons also in vivo, fire more. Next, we wanted to tackle where is this elevated neuronal activity originating from. We found out that the membrane properties are similar between FOSGP positive and FOSGP negative cells. The only thing that was different is that although their action potential threshold was similar, it still needed more currents to elicit an action potential, which makes them less excitable. Next, we turned out to study the synaptic properties of those cells, or synaptic inputs, and found out that those cells do receive more excitation, as noted by the increased frequency of the spontaneously uh, excited repulse synaptic currents. They do also show less inhibition, as shown by the reduced frequency and amplitude of the inhibitory repulse synaptic currents. It appears that FOSGFP positive neurons receive input from some other highly active cells. To test whether they were connected to each other, we carried out paired cell recordings, positive to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive, and negative to negative. Directly connected pairs uh, were happening only when both cells or both neurons were FOSGFP positive. 10% of those cells were mono synaptically directly connected pairs. So what do we hope to do next? There are a number of exciting new research directions that this work inspires. It will be extremely interesting to determine whether this active subnetwork is maintained over time using time-lapse imaging in vivo over multiple days. Secondly, we're very curious about what drives activity of this subnetwork in vivo. Previous studies have shown that spontaneous activity, which is the subject of the current study, typically reactivates the same circuits that are engaged by sensory evoked activity in vivo. We are very excited about examining the response properties of FOSGFP expressing neurons during sensory stimulation, specifically tactile stimulation in somatosensory cortex.